the derivative and the tangent line problem. Basically, we're introducing something called a derivative. The derivative finds the slope of a curve at any point. Now, a line, see this green line, has a slope. A curve, the red one, has multiple slopes. At any point, you have a different slope. The slope is continuously changing on a curve. That's the whole concept of calculus. Finding slopes on a curve. Very simple, but kind of okay. Secant. The word secant is when you have a curve, if you put two points, the line going through those two points is a secant. Kind of on a circle, way back when you did circles, when you put two points on a circle, put a line through it, that's called a secant. Got it? A tangent line, a secant line to a tangent line. What a tangent line is, is if I have this curve at this point right here, if I wanted the line perpendicular or the slope at that point, it's called the tangent line. The tangent line is perpendicular to the graph at a given point. Can you see at this point, do you see how I'd have a line kind of like this? Can you see that? We're up at here, I'd have a line kind of like this, perpendicular to it, it's kind of like the slope line. So when you hear a tangent line, it's kind of like the slope line, the line of the slope. Tangent is a has only one point. It's at a point, it's the slope at one point, basically. Secant has two points. Now, if I wanted to find the slope at that point of the red line, is this green line somewhat of an approximation? It's a pretty ugly approximation. But to find slope, from what you know so far, don't you need two points? You need two points. So I took two points, and so I could approximate that slope at that point right there of the red line. Now, do you understand the closer I bring this dot to this dot, do you understand my slope gets more and more accurate? Can you imagine that? The closer I bring this in, this green line gets flatter and flatter and gets to becomes more and more like the slope at that point. So, what's happening is, again, if we jimmy rig that curve, again, try to make it the best I can. And if I keep that point right there, but if I bring that to really close, do you see again how that line is a better for that certain point, the same point right there? The slope is getting better and better. Okay, That's still a secant line. But at some point, my graphs aren't perfect, do you understand that if we got a slope exactly at one point, we'd actually have the tangent line, the slope at that point, which is also called the tangent line. It's perpendicular to the graph. Now, we don't know how to take slopes at one point, but that's what we're going to learn. Taking slopes given only one point, basically. Now, do you guys understand slope is change in, so it changes a triangle. Y over change in X. Are you okay with that? Change in Y over change of X is slope. Now, as we're getting, as these dots are getting closer and closer together, do you see how your change of X becomes zero? <coughs> and your change of Y is basically becoming zero? The change of both of them become zero. See this limit right here? Slope at a given point is the limit as the change of y and change of x uh, of slope as the bottom approaches zero, which doesn't exist, does it? But can we use the idea of a limit to see what would it be if there was an actual value? So what we're doing, this is slope right here. This is slope, derivative. The change of y over change of x is slope. We want to know when, what is, at what value will this when the denominator approaches zero, that will give us the slope at the given point. Now, we change this to this. Now, do you see how change of x stays at the bottom? Except the top, well, where do they get f, x plus change of x minus f of x? Well, do you understand for slope, you have y2 
minus y1. Do you understand that? Yes. And if we have two points here, okay, if this coordinate right here, wouldn't you call that coordinate x, f of x? x is the input, f of x would be the output. Is that okay? So that point is x, f of x. What would you call that point right there? Y. Well, it wouldn't, how far over would it be? Wouldn't it be x plus change of x? Is that okay? And the output, wouldn't that be f of it would be f of x plus f of change of y. Change of x. Sorry. It's f of x. This height right here, isn't it f of x this height plus the change when you plug in the, f, the change of x? When you plug in the difference in the x? If you plug in the original height plus f of the change of x, that would give you this height. Now, look at these two coordinates. Look at this coordinate right here. Isn't y2, this right here, f plus change of x? Oops, I messed up. That should be f of x plus change of x. Are you okay with that? I did mess up writing over a whole bunch of junk. The x value is x plus change of x. So wouldn't the output be f with that plugged in? I'm sorry. So f plus change of x is the output. Now, isn't this y2? Isn't this y1? y2 minus y1? It's in your book. If this isn't making sense, it's also in your book. But basically, this is f of x plus change of x. This is f of x. This is y2 minus y1. This is change of x. Now, I could also put all the other formalities for it, but you don't need to. Now, this idea of doing f of x plus change of x minus f of x divided by x prime, I'm sorry, change of x as a limit approaches, as a limit of change of x approaches zero, will give you the slope at a given point. It's kind of weird. It'll come with more practice. The easiest way to write that is f prime. It's called the derivative f prime x, also written as delta y over delta x. Not delta, but dy over dx. This is a derivative, way of writing derivative. You could also write it as y prime. You could also write it as the derivative of f of x. You will learn to see all of these forms for derivatives. You will see all those forms. It means the same thing. These two forms, you rarely ever see. You'll be happy. We see it for the first time, we'll learn the basic idea, and then we skip it and go on to a very easy method. So you basically got to know this just for the beginning idea. OK, that was a really hard explanation. Now, so as, again, these dots get closer and closer, you get to this situation where you get a tangent line at a point. That, we use this function, and we could actually find the slope, and you'll see the practice. Now, besides all of this, 